Thank you. We hereby call to order the uh, uh, Finance Committee of the Regional Transportation Authority um, uh, for February 20th, 2020 to order. Uh, Madam Secretary, would you give us a roll call, please? Director Colson? Here. Director Groven? Here. Director Holt? Here. Director Cotel? Here. Director Lewis? Here. Director Ross? Here. Director Sager? Here. Director Traiani? Here. Director Melvin? Here. We have a quorum of nine present with no absent. If the record would also show that directors Andalcio, Carey, Frega, Fuentes, Higgins, and Chairman Dillard are also present. Very good, thank you. Um, and next we have the approval of the minutes from the meeting held on December 19th of 2019. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, anything to add? Anyone? Okay, good. Uh, is there a motion and a second to approve the minutes as submitted? Uh, Tom, Alex. Uh, Sorry, is that moved and Director Cotel and Director, Director Cotel. Lewis? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Will the secretary please call the roll? Director Colson. Yes. Director Groven. Yes. Director Holt. Yes. Director Cotel. Aye. Director Lewis. Yes. Director Ross. Yes. Director Sager. Yes. Director Triani. Yes. Director Melvin. Nine eyes. Thank you. Um, next, we have a report on the monthly financials for November and December and the resolutions uh, certifying financial results for the fourth quarter, 2019. Oh. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the Finance Committee. Uh, today, um, I am presenting the year-to-date financial results through the fourth quarter of 2019, which are subject to the certification. Ridership and operating revenue are both still unfavorable to budget, but expense performance finished strong due to a snow-free December. The regional recovery ratio ended 1.3 points favorable to budget at 51.9%. At the end of the presentation, I will be recommending that the board certify that the results of the operations of each service board and the region as a whole be found in substantial accordance with the adopted 2019 budget. So now looking at ridership. System ridership through December was almost 3% below prior year. This result was 1.7% lower than budget, as a full year ridership decrease of about 1% was expected for 2019. As shown by the orange bars on the chart, they're more like yellow, but what anyway. <laughs> January experienced the largest ridership drop from prior year due to the severe cold. And each month since has also underperformed relative to budget and prior year. Going back to the summary table, each service board recorded unfavorable ridership through the fourth quarter. The shortfall at Pace Suburban Service was 6.1%, which is highlighted in red. In total, the system was 9.5 million rides unfavorable to budget. So now looking at operating revenue, uh, which was 10.3 million or 0.9% unfavorable to budget. This despite the 16.5 million cut to reduce fare reimbursement from the funding, which fortunately was offset by strong ancillary revenue performance at each of the service boards. PACE's operating revenue variance exceeded 3%, again due to lower than budgeted fare revenue and the cuts to the reduced fare subsidy. Now looking at public funding, the section of the dashboard shows the results are 29.2 million or 1.8% below budget due to unfavorable sales tax, real estate transfer tax, and public transportation fund results. October sales tax results came in about 3.6% higher than prior year. With the quarterly results, we also show this chart, which shows sales tax growth by merchant category, in this case through the third quarter of 2019, which is the latest available data that we have. Food and drink, two of our largest categories, have shown the most strength. This data has a lag, and the overall growth has since improved to a positive 1.5% for the year. Automotive and filling stations, our largest sales tax producer, had virtually no growth through the third quarter as average gas prices were essentially unchanged from 2018. So now looking at expenses, system-wide expenses through December were $77.8 million, or 2.8% favorable to budget, with all three service boards and ADA paratransit reporting favorable results. So looking at the fuel slide, um, it shows that the service boards have benefited from lower than budgeted diesel fuel prices by a total of 9 million. The expense summary at the regional level 
regional level, um, shows favorable expenses more than offset the unfavorable revenue and public funding, producing a net result which was $38.3 million favorable to budget. So that's an improvement of $13.3 million from last month's results. So looking at the recovery ratio, it improved to 51.9%, which is favorable to budget by 1.3 percentage points. The fair revenue recovery ratio, which is the pure recovery ratio, of 36.4%, and the all revenue recovery ratio was 43.4. Both were about one point lower than prior year, reflecting again the impact of lower ridership and year over year expense growth of about 2%. In the right section, CTA Metro and ADA Paratransit each reported favorable to budget recovery ratios, which were driven by good expense performance. PACE's result was slightly unfavorable due to their operating revenue shortfall again. So now looking at the operating deficit, focusing on the certification of year-to-date financial results through the fourth quarter, the slide displays the variances of the operating deficits from the budget with each service board reporting a favorable variance. The combined regional operating deficit was $67.4 million or 4.2% favorable to budget. Accordingly, we recommend that the results of the operations of each service board and the region as a whole be found in substantial accordance with the adopted budget. These are unaudited results. If the audited results, uh, once we receive them from the service boards, differ materially, we will notify um, the chairman and, and the committee. So typically, as you know, we present results, fully audited results, at the May or June meeting. Um, that concludes our remarks. Um, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, B. Um, any comments, questions? Yes, Director Colson. Uh, B, did we ever quantify or define what it means to be substantially in accordance with the budget? I know we talked about it at one, one time. Uh, well, as you know, uh, you may recall, a few years ago, there was a lot of discussion about um, what people felt may be arbitrary. So we had uh, a guidance document that we tried to actually pass through the board, and it was not passed, but at least we presented it as a guidance document. In that document, we went through and established a number of criteria. Um, we look at um, a couple of things, right? First of all, it related to the color. What was gonna be red, what wasn't gonna be red, you know, at one point we had light blue, dark blue, it was kind of crazy. So we decided it was red if it was 3% or higher on either end, right? A good thing or a bad thing. Um, blue, red, and we also talked about being in substantial accordance. We look at overall recovery ratio, and we look at, um, you know, their expense performance, and that's why they're in substantial performance, uh, accordance, because of their uh, reduced expenses, and in the end, they're still, you know, they're still okay. Uh, we could redistribute that document again, you know, just for guidance, so people could look at that. It might be appropriate since it's been about five years. Yes, we could do that. Thank you. Be one of the things that uh, we separated out here was the year-to-date financial reports for fuel itself, and this is through December 2019. Are there and it was favorable to budget in this particular instance? Have there been projections in terms of what the impact of the state-imposed uh, now motor fuel tax might be, and then uh, similarly, of course, uh, municipalities are heading in that same direction. So, could you give me any indication about right. uh, the projected potential impact of that additional motor fuel tax? So, the first thing is we have not seen any of that money yet. <laughs> um, so, we uh, we've looked at um, whether or not you know it's going to start flowing. Um, there's been discussions um, at the state level of when that money will flow. Um, all we've really looked at is what the projections are at the news, you know, in the news. We, we've not yet received any formal projections. Is there anything um, anyone else would like to add to that from the RTA? And, and I'll get to it a little bit in my remarks, but I mean, we're, the estimated amount that should be coming to transit e annually out of the motor fuel tax piece uh, is $227 million right. a year. Right. And so far that looks like it's actually tracking uh, appropriately. I'm looking at Jeremy and Jill. I think that that's the way it's tracking. It is sitting with IDOT. They've collected about $100 million or so, but it hasn't started flowing yet. And what's the uh, opposite side of that in terms of expenses associated for the various service boards? I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, I mean, we're purchasing fuel. Is that going to oh. impact... Yeah, no. they, they don't be, pay that they're a government tax. entity, Very so good. they're not paying the tax. Thank you so much. Uh, Director Lewis. B, um, 
and we've looked at the numbers um, on a regular basis in terms of what the service agencies have done to offset the reduction in, in ridership. They've been very uh, good about cutting expenses, but one of the things we've said is that you can't cut your way to prosperity. So my question is, um, is there any, have we ever done a study in terms of a correlation between investing more in marketing and advertising to try and drive demand? Because uh, ridership keeps going down. I know we've done a lot of work in terms of working on that, but I'm just curious as to whether or not there's any, um, you know, correlation between a dollar invested in marketing and advertising and information and a, a, a corresponding change in demand because people might be more aware or more mm -hmm. uh, knowledgeable. So just, it, it's a right. question of curiosity. They, they've all done that. Um, there's some studies currently underway, surveys I would call them, not so much studies. Um, and, and some of those are pending results, but they, they've all looked at that. Um, I, I don't have any specific hard, you know, data as to what that correlation looks like. Uh, but um, I know that they're looking at, I mean, it's not just surveying your writers, right? It's surveying who isn't writing and why aren't they writing and um, all of that. So, and I know the RTA has done studies as well, but I don't have anything here. We could certainly see what else is available. My, my question is more rather than survey, it's more in terms of just getting information. I, 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 this is a bad What their spend is on marketing versus what it's yielding? No, or? I'm thinking about, I watched the debates last night, I watched Michael Bloomberg, who basically spent $230 million or whatever it was, and now he's basically ranked in the top you know, yeah, um, yeah. candidates. So I'm just thinking, is there a core? I'm sorry, it's a bad example. Already, I, I, I oh, it's true. It. I'll take but, it to but is there a correlation between cranking up the marketing effort and maybe affecting ridership in some way, shape, or form? That's mm -hmm. ultimately my question. So I'll jump in a little bit on that. I mean, RTA, I don't know, ten years ago, spent about five, six million on marketing across the entire region, and you know, it, it, it's very hard to find that direct one-for-one -one relationship between you know a dollar spent here translating into a rider. What we do know is what drives ridership more is the economy and broader socioeconomic changes that we we have. I mean, Jessica's report just highlighted the fact of, you know, the the work at home. Um, the number of people working at home is increasing by 24%. You know, that's impacting our direct ridership. So all the marketing we do in the world is not going to change the, the evolution of technology and the way people are working and moving around the region. Uh, the service boards still do direct one-on-one -on -one or di direct to rider, rider kind of potential rider marketing. And we have always left that kind of um, that in their space. We've always, what we've played in is more sort of that regional space. But when we spent what I think is a pretty significant um, amount of money, you know, we didn't necessarily see a huge translation into ridership changes. Again, because of these broader forces that Im impact ridership. Um, all agencies, and, and I think even to some extent, even in the private sector, as soon as budgets get tight, the first thing to get cut is marketing because, you know, if you've got to keep the buses and trains running, that's the most important thing to do. Uh, so, you know, there's, it's, we continue, and I think through some of the efforts of the strategic plan, think about this more broadly in terms of it's not marketing per se, but how do we make strategic investments into the existing infrastructure, focusing on core markets and core constituencies that actually could potentially generate ridership, uh, making sure that the services that we're providing are sort of efficient, safe, and reliable, so that actually can be other ways to start to sort of create an environment where transit becomes more competitive in the marketplace. And so that's sort of the tack that we've pivoted off to within this last strategic plan from, you know, adopted a couple of years ago after we did, you know, sort of a five-year marketing effort across the region. So I think that's kind of really where our focus is now to be a little more strategic in that and not as much doing sort of that traditional promo. Now, we still continue to be a voice uh, as well as the service boards in the region, uh, but not necessarily that sort of paid advertising kind of space. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. Yes. Um, would it be safe to say or a fair assumption with the proposed taxes on the ride-sharing Uber Lyft that it would possibly increase ridership? I think all of those certainly pay uh, play a part. And um, I think that the service boards are somewhat optimistic. We've actually had some conversations with them. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I do think that they will have an impact, but we'll have to see what the numbers look like. That comes back to the competitiveness of the market. So the, the fees, the, the, re the revenue that's being generated out of the, the Uber and Lyft fee, as I call it, you know, is going to CTA to actually improve some of the mm -hmm. bus lanes and bus speeds. 
the the other side of that coin is hopefully it sort of is right pricing the that kind of service, making transit's pricing more competitive, but also potentially maybe decreasing the demand on some of those Ubers and Lyfts. So, you know, the bus running up LaSalle can actually move at a reasonable pace as opposed to being stuck in a sea of Ubers and Lyfts. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, Great. thank, thank you, you then. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, if I could just say it would be uh, um, uh, the numbers um, – uh, tell us that the service boards do a very, very good job of managing this. And it's all, it's highlighted by Jessica's, the information that Jessica gave us earlier. Uh, those are pretty dramatic numbers. And so uh, it shows just what a great job the service boards are doing for managing costs and, and managing things. So thank you. And thank it you shows much. that even though we budget, you know, the recovery ratio tight, and I know there's always concern and we watch that very diligently. I mean, they they will rein in their expenses and they always come in a bit higher than what they had actually projected, but you know, so so they're watching it very cut tightly. Thank you very much, B. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? Um, if not, is there a motion and a second to approve the resolutions as submitted? Any uh, can I have a second and uh, I mean, can I have a motion and a second, please? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Director Holt uh, moves and Director Groven seconds. Um, uh, Madam Secretary, would you give us a roll call, please? Director Colson? Yes. Director Groban? Yes. Director Holt? Yes. Director Cotel? Aye. Director Lewis? Yes. Director Ross? Yes. Director Sager? Yes. Director Troiani? Aye. Director Melvin? Yes. Nine ayes. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, if there's no further business to come before the public session of the Finance Committee, I will entertain a motion and a second to adjourn. Moved by Director Sagar, second by Director Ross. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Noes? Any opposed? No? We are adjourned. Thank you.